Right, so we're back to this thing. It's been a couple of weeks since I last worked on this. Some parts have arrived, so we can carry on the repair. So I'm going to get back into it. Now, what we found last time was that there's a reed relay in here which is not working correctly. And I purchased a range of reed relays. I'll put an overlay on the screen to show what's actually in here versus what I've found. And I think I did find something which is very compatible. Now I did look at recapping this thing, I actually only replaced one capacitor and there was a Phillips cap that was down here. Being a Phillips cap I was suspicious of it and so I replaced it. But everything basically seems good, there wasn't really much to be concerned about in this thing. There's very few caps in it, there's just some, basically some big ones over here and it's using lots of dipped caps instead, so which is quite nice. There's a couple of tantalums in here too but they'll be fine. Everything I checked looked alright, so I didn't have any problems with it, I thought well it's alright, it's good. So. The only reason I replaced that one cap was because it's a Phillips and I didn't really trust it. And because I didn't trust it, I thought I'll, I'll swap it out now and just replace another one. And then once I got a Phillips cap out and I retested it out of circuit, it was fine. Even though it was a Phillips one, which I have a bad history of finding bad ones of, because of the age, purely because, you know, they're 30 years old, it was still actually okay. So I replaced it anyway, so not a big deal. I also checked the ones on the front panel here as well. Pulled this card out, rid all those, checked it out, it's all fine. We did the bashes on the front as well, we replaced those. And now it's got to do this re relay, hopefully it'll stop working after that. The relay we need to replace is this one right here, so we've got to get this out. Now the only part I could find which was at least close isn't exactly the right one, it's similar. So it's the HE721C0500, so this is very very similar to what's in here, it's not the same brand or not like that, it's a different brand, it's equivalent part, but the difference is this doesn't have an electrostatic shield in it, so this should be a 520 on the end to get that shielding to be exactly the same part. So it's really close, the switching and the core will stuff the same, there's no internal diode, all that stuff is the same, at least in theory, it should be the same. There's no shielding. Well, I don't know if that really matters, it may or may not matter, it could be a really subtle effect it has, it could be a really obvious effect, I really don't know. But that's what I've got, so that's what I'm gonna put in. It's still better than nothing working. So it's a close up with the back of the board, obviously, and there's two here, so it's stacked one above the other, there's one down here, there's another one here, you can just see the four sets of pins, there's two there, two there, two there, two there, so it's all eight pins there. So those ones have got a desolder. Now this is a double sided board and it's quite a big ground plane or at least a very big plane on the other side of the board which a couple of these pins go to. That may make it hard to get out. As the part basically doesn't work anyway I'm open to cutting the legs off but I don't like to do that in case I have to go back to the part because it's still better than nothing. But I don't like to do it unless I absolutely have to. We'll try it first with a desoldering gun and see if we can get that out. Hopefully it will come out alright. Right, let's try and get this thing desoldered. I've just put some fresh solder on Sunar's legs to try and help it come out. We'll see how we go. See if we can do it. But it's going to be tricky. Alright, did it do it? Are the legs free? Let's find out. So because it didn't want to desolder very nicely, I don't want to risk damaging the main board. I'm going to cut it out. I don't like to do this normally, but I think in this circumstance I'm going to have to. So let's get cutting. And always before you do this, make sure you are cutting the right part because that's always bad if you cut the legs of the wrong part. Alright, so I've got the part out. I cut the legs off, desoldered a couple of legs on the bottom here. Last couple there. Just blobbed them. So now I've got to get the rest of these pins out which are still attached. Well, that one's loose, that's going to fall out. And we'll get all these other pins out, then we'll clean the holes up and then we can put the new part in. So the tricky thing is to get these legs out without dropping them inside the unit and have them disappear. Because then you've got to go hunting and that's never fun. Alright, so the holes are all cleared out. And now I've got to get the new part in. Get it around the right way, that's kind of important. Let's get this thing soldered in. Not going to easy flux because it shouldn't really need it. It's a pretty clean board and this is good solder, so we'll see how we go. Hope that new flux. Now, what I've got to do is get this to flow through to the other side of the board as well. If I need flux, I'll add it, but I'm trying to avoid it. It's a bit less to try and clean off. So before I clean this, I'll check the other sides to make sure it's flowed. All right, let's have a look. Just turn the power on. I haven't done anything else yet. We'll check the scope in a second. I just want to see if it's actually going to do anything. Output enabled. We have an output. That's good. So channel two, I'm not currently using. I'm turn it off. So we're currently getting a 1.1 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal. I've got a 50 ohm load on here, so that looks about right. One volt output. So, that's okay. Frequency is correct, one kilohertz. 
So, one kilohertz right now, let's change the frequency. So, frequency, and I'm going to go use the vernier, and we'll just see what it does. So if we go down to less than one kilohertz, that's still behaving. More than one kilohertz, still behaving. So, I think, remember, if I remember before, it was actually jumping at the one kilohertz mark. I don't actually remember that exactly now. There was a threshold where it changes in the relays. So I'm going to go all the way up with this, and we'll just see what happens. See that suddenly jump then as it went to the 100 kilohertz. That's looking all right. Let's check for frequency range. 307. We've got 307 on the scope. That's good. So frequency is still correct. Approach one megahertz, but well, I think there's another step at one megahertz. I think there was something in. Yes, there's a step there, it jumped. So it's changing ranges or something there, it's jumping, but that's okay. It's actually looking consistent. That's good. So I'm pretty sure it's one kilohertz or one megahertz where the issues were, but right now it's looking like it's fixed. So when I get to 10 megahertz, I'll look at it again. That's basically correct. Yep, that's matching. There's no hobble jumps there. Amplitude is consistent all the way across. Still 1.18. The amplitude is now increasing, which is interesting. See, it's, it's now going up. Where does it start increasing? About there is where it's bottoms out so it's about 12 megahertz is staying there but after that it starts to increase it's about 1.22 volts now 1.5 volts there 27 megahertz so that's interesting the way it's increasing in aperture that's not probably supposed to do that it might be a calibration thing 35 megahertz is 2.1 volts And now it's dipping down again. So it's probably a linearity thing there. And at 50 megahertz, we're getting 2.5 volts. So its peak is about there. It's about 3.1 volts. So it's quite a big difference there. So that's something I probably have to look into. So we'll go back to 1 kilohertz again, which is here. Yes. And I just change it. Time based on this, I was one bit of thing. That's 1.16 volts. So frequency, and we'll go down. And let's check the bottom end, make sure that's okay. Still 1.17 volts there. So it's really flat until about 12 megahertz, and then it starts to change. And that's as large as it's going to go, is it? No, it's still going. I heard a little click as it changed ranges and it slowed down. Voltage level is about 1.1615 around there. So it's still really flat at the bottom end, it's just that top end which is drifting off. And my scope update rate is obviously now becoming a factor because it's sampling. Quite slowly now to the alpha this. Well, it's looking pretty good down there, still good. So now, now millihertz. It's 1.15 volts there. So, yeah, I think we might still have something to look at here with that 12 megahertz, that ranging, but it could just be a calibration thing. So, 133 millihertz. I mean, I think I've done enough here. I mean, it's obviously working. Yay. So, a bit of an update to this section of it, with the high frequency error we're getting with the, the uh, amplitude increasing a lot, above 12 megahertz, wasn't it? The issue was termination of the signal, so I had it right here, terminated right there. Obviously then you get the cable and you get ringing in the cable and that sort of stuff, you can get cable effects as a result of that. I'm actually doing a live stream right now, I'm one of the people on my live stream, I've forgotten who it was now, said hey, maybe the termination should be up there instead, by the scope, and I was like, ah, yes, that's a good point, it should be up by the scope because that then terminates the cable 
not just the output from the unit. I've now moved the terminator up here, so it's 50 ohm terminator, and I'm now getting 1.06 volts at this frequency I'm doing right now, which is 6 megahertz. You can't see a megahertz symbol because the bulb is blown. I need to replace those bulbs actually. I need to do that. If I go to say 30 megahertz, frequency 30 megahertz, still get 1 volt, 1.04 volts, it's exactly the same. And if I then do the vernier upwards as well, I'm just going all the way up. So it's staying basically the same. It dropped very slightly at the very top end there, that's 50 megahertz, and I'm getting 960 millivolts. Right, so it's obviously just dropped just a little bit there at the end. Again, that could be the cable though, you know, this might not be the best for it. Now it's actually correct, it hasn't spiked up in amplitude and, and gone crazy like it's doing before, above 12 megahertz. And if I bring it all the way down, you'll see the amplitude is basically staying the same, all the way down. So that is now below 10 megahertz, and that is still 1.06 volts it's got there now. It's increased very slightly. If I stop doing that, still got 1.06 still. We keep going down. That looks like that is the issue, wasn't is my incorrect application of a terminator at this end instead of that end. I mean normally I would put it up here, I just happened to have it on this end because I was playing around with it at the time when I did this original hookup, I didn't have any output from it, so I just wanted some kind of termination on there. Little thing to watch out for, if you're in termination, put it in the right place to the cable. Because you need to dull the cable down, the cable will ring. And to put in termination at the end of the cable, stops the cable from ringing and stuff like that. It helps reduce reflection, that kind of stuff. So I'm still getting 1.06 volts there, so into the kilohertz region there, hundreds of kilohertz, and it's still flat, so it's doing really well. 1.05 now, there you go, it's coming down to 100 kilohertz. So if I do 1 kilohertz, we'll speed this process up slightly. That's 1.07 volts. If I do uh, 100 hertz, 1.07 volts. So yep, it's basically flat across the range now. I've had a very slight drop off at the very top, so excellent, that worked. Right, so now we need to replace the bulbs that are in the front here. This actually has bulbs, not LEDs. So I've purchased some bulbs, which have just arrived in a mail bag, which is the same as the other bits. They're here somewhere. Oh, there they are. There you go. Here's the bulbs. So these are 5 volt, 60 milliamp bulbs. These are hopefully the correct ones. I know they run at 5 volts and another 60 milliamps based on the service manual which stated those are the parts. But are they the right size? I don't know. I haven't seen what's in here yet. So we're going to find out. They may or may not be right. So let's get this front panel off. Right, so I've got one screw at the bottom here. I might need to take the strap off from here. I shall see. I'm not sure if the screw goes right through to the front panel or not. I might just be on the side rail. I can't tell. There we go, trim panel, and there's some more screws. Of course there are. There's a screw there, there we go. One screw on the back of the trim panel. Now it slides off, that's more like it. Always look first. <laughs> So I think this will fold down and then when it gets to inside, I think there's enough slack in all the cables to be able to fold it down. Then I've got to remove the PCB from the back of the plate. Whilst that's out, I can also give it a bit of a clean inside and clean any dust off the inside of the display because it actually, it's quite surprising how much dust you get inside displays. And it's also quite surprising how much effect it has giving it a clean. You get a display which looks a bit dull and bland and then you give it a wipe up and it will be really nice. So let's move in there, let's move in there. Now I've got some cables here, which I might need to unplug if I can. It might be okay, I think I can fold it down. Right, just spin this thing around, make it easy to work on. So, this I can kind of fold it down. If I pop this up like that, it'll be easier. Let's do that, let's pop it up on something. Onto the chassis, not onto the seat at all. There you go, onto the chassis like that. So that's now kind of held out of the way. So we've got to get this board here out. Right, 
Right, that's those off. And there's one more for that front panel as well. There, I'll get that one out. So it should allow me to get that ball there out. The rest of it can stay in place, that's fine. I don't, don't need to mess with that. Okay, so I've got all the screws out. Let's try and lift the board out. There's an awful lot of surface corrosion on there, is it? Even though it's gold plate, there's still some corrosion on there. So the bulbs are inside these little cavities in here. So I need to move this thing back out of the way so I can work on this board. I'll give us a wipe now before I forget. Well, it looks fairly clean, actually. We've got a few things here. Here's the board. Now these buttons are a bit clicky. They're not really meant to be clicky. They're supposed to just be springy. But they tend to get clicky with age. We've got these spring steel strips, you see. Some better. This one's basically how it's supposed to be. It's just pushing. So what I actually might do is maybe take some of the strips out and um, spin them around. Because that can make a difference to make them a bit nicer. They just get aged and they tend to sort of take that shape and they don't tend to flex like they should do. You just, you just take a strip out, flip it around, put it back in again, and that usually brings it right. In here are the bulbs you need to look at. So you've got this one, those four, those two. So you've got seven bulbs that are on that board. So we'll check them all. I think there's only two which I know of which are blown. I wasn't quite sure what was actually behind this panel because there's actually markings on the panel here for alternative outputs. Like this one's got these two. It's actually like this layer here, but it's over here as well. This is obviously not populated. It's not applicable to this unit, so I thought it might be bulbs here, and that's not the case. There isn't an LED here, which I'm careful about bending back again. So we'll do the bulbs first, then we'll look at doing these strips and see if we can make these a bit nicer. You can see on the board here, you can see it's got this corrosion, which is surprising seeing it's gold. It's just a little bit of oxidization on this, just not much. You can just see like patterns of it. You get the light reflecting on it, it looks perfect, but when you get the light not reflecting on it, you can see it. Maybe it's fingerprints on there, which is then gone there. Maybe it's fingerprints actually, it could be we've been touching it. Yeah, it's like a patch there, there's a patch there, end in the middle of there. So I think it's fingerprints actually. There's a passive there, I should check that. So there we go, we're getting 48 microfarad, 1.4 ohms, and this is a 47 microfarad, 6.3 volt cat. So I'm pretty happy with that value, it seems fine. Alright, let's just check these bulbs out. So we're going to start from the left to the right, or the right to the left, depending on how you're looking at it. 9.8 ohms in that one. Yeah, it's about 10 ohms. 10 ohms basically. 1.8 again. That one's open, so that's the one we know about. It's the megahertz symbol. That one there. And we've got a footprint over here which isn't used. We've got these two over here. 9.6 ohms. Open, so that's one which is also need to replace. So down there as well. So we've got two bulbs to do, which is great. That's nice and easy. So let's get these bulbs out. Should be pretty easy, hopefully. We'll see if we can do it with this without much else initially. Let's grab it with some tweezers. That one's out. Get this other one out and go. Let's set one out. Right, so now let's put new bulbs in. I think I'll pull 10, is it? Yeah, 10 in there, so plenty for future ones as well. Again, I didn't know how many I needed, so I think it came as a pack of 10 actually. Basically the same size, very slightly shorter, I think, but specs are the same, so that's the main thing. At least I chose the right kind of bulb. Cat here floating around doesn't really help when you're trying to see little fun, fine wire leads. You can't tell which one's a cat here, which one's a wire lead. Okay. Let's get this soldered in. I'm not using flux, I don't tend to do unless I need to. Sometimes I regret it. Done. Let's clip those off, clean it up. Alright, let's just recheck these two bulbs. I'll just put in just to make sure they're okay before I put it back together again. Nothing like putting it back together and finding it doesn't work. 9.7, great. And the other one. 9.7, great. They're both working. So now we've done the bulbs, we can look at doing these switches to try and see if we can get them so they're not clicking anymore. Let's 
to get some fine tweezers so this little metal strip in there, little spring strip but we'll try and get that out so I'll just do one and see if it will work and I think I did it once on my HP 5342A, the microfix account, I think I did it on that it's doable but it's a really fragile, really thin little strip so I've got to try and be careful not to damage them in the process of trying to get them out it's a bit harder with the button top in a way but I don't want to take them off Out. So there's the strip. Let's flip it over and put it back in. Hopefully. Fixed. No longer clicky. It's a bit tedious doing all of them, but I'm going to need to do all of them. I think there's only a couple which like this one's okay. I think I'll probably have to go around all of them. Because they basically all need doing because we're clicking and they should just be doing like that. It's pushing nicely. So I'll get that to all of them, that should be good. So I've changed my technique from what I did on the very first one I did. And what I'm doing now is slightly different, it's, it's slightly easier. So I thought I'd share that with you as well. And I've already done a whole bunch of these, all these ones I've done. Alright, so I've got a couple left over here and I've got three more on the other side. This one is done. Which ones are the ones I'm clicking? I think it was this one I've got to do next, that one there. But I think that's kind of okay. This one's definitely clicking, so anyway, we'll pull this one out. So I was putting it out from the bottom, which is like I did before. There it is, grab that, pull that out. Flip it over 180 degrees, and set it back in from the bottom. Okay. Then you get a second tweezer. Let's try and get my hand out of the way. And you put it behind that. So as you slide it up, it goes over the tweezer, you can grab it that tweezer, pull it up, seat it in the bottom, like that, hold it in, and then just push it down to place like that. And done. That's far easier than the first one I did it, which was trying to go through the top. If you don't have a button in the way, then you can probably do it easier through the top, but that one is slightly clicky. I think it will change this one. I haven't done this one yet. This seems almost acceptable, but I thought, no, nah, I'll change it now. I was, I might have to change it in a year's time, it'd be a bit of a pain to put it apart, and I just won't bother. So, I'll just do that, change it around now. Get okay, this in. Put it down. And done. Easy. Right now, I can get this thing back together. Now, I've got these LEDs I'm worried about because it's got to line up these holes, and I'm not completely sure what I do. <laughs> We'll find out soon enough. Lower it in straight, might be helpful. Now let's have a look. Did a LED stick out? Yes, yes, and yes. Okay, that's fine. All line up. Good thing to check for before you put the screws in. Now it's going to put them in and not tighten them so it gives it a chance to self align. Otherwise, you put screws in, tighten them down, and then you find the other screws don't want to go in or going crooked or stuff like that because the hole doesn't quite line up. So, so my technique is always just to do them in, get them close to down, and then do do them all. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. That sort of stuff as well. Should really say that often. Should really say at the beginning of the videos more often. Always think about it at the end. Of course, I've got loads of playlists at the back end as well, so make sure you check out the end of the video. There's always loads of playlists right at the end. Well, I, I link to a couple of playlists, and one will probably be test equipment repair, most likely. There's probably something there you want to watch. I think at the moment I've done something like 800 and 120 videos, something like that. I think I'm up to, something like that. At the time I'm recording this. Loads of the videos, loads of time. Now I have to reattach these. And, like, is it underneath? Or on top? 
probably on the knife. Right. And like that. Just about there. Check up the screws and it doesn't fall apart, then I'll try powering it up, see if it'll work. Now these ones cost their counter sense drawers. Doing these ones up is probably a good thing rather than leaving them loose because that does align it. Breaking my own rules there. Let's pair it up. Let's see if the indicator is working. Just shut the gun there. Okay. So we have frequency 10 millihertz. 10 frequency 10. Hertz, frequency 10 kilohertz. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> you see that? That wasn't going, and then I tapped it and it came on. That bulb's playing up now. Isn't that funny? I didn't set the solder on there, did I? I don't think so. Hmm. <laughs> That'd be funny, wouldn't it? Go and put a part again to change one of the bulbs. And megahertz. Right, megahertz is at least working. Let's do kilohertz again. Hmm. Concerning. So you've got volts, uh, amplitude. Let's do one millivolt. Yep, that's working as well now. Don't worry about the error. That's probably just me doing something silly. At least the megahertz is lighting up now. So I've got two bulbs working, but this particular <laughs> the kilohertz one's potentially going to fail. That's just annoying. We'll see how it goes. If it plays up, I have to pull it apart again and do that one. <sighs> Typical. So there we go, one more Clumpeasy project. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, click the bell icon to get notifications about new videos as they come out. This is now fixed, I've replaced the other bulb, pulled it apart again, did the other bulb, so that's all done. All the bulbs good now. I've adjusted the frequency, so it's now bang on frequency, and that's all really good. So I'm happy with that. This can either go into my other room and sit there as maybe if I'll use it one day, or I might sell it, I'm not sure. If you're looking for one of these, let me know, if you're in New Zealand as well. If you're in New Zealand and you want one of these, let me know, I might put it on a trade me or something. You see it works. Catch you later, thanks for watching. Bye.